Hospital Lewis Smithers. Let's go ahead. Let's get into the programming. We're going to be doing that raw pull up, muscle up, strength building EMOM. Remember that middle section is all about building raw strength. The first section is just activation, uh, trying to warm up, wake up the lats, all the pullers. And then the last section is going ahead and kind of train, clean up some stability issues. For those of you that have muscle ups, trying to get a little more volume in, get practice, hitting the right positions, being very mindful during it. For those of you who don't have muscle ups, remember, uh, this is where you like, do I have dips? And if it's like, cool, if I have dips, then check to see if you're actually doing the dip correctly, right? One way you can do that, can you actually hold the top of a support, right, of a dip with externally rotated palms, right? That means not like this with the rings, but you're turning it like this, facilitating that natural lockout of the elbow that occurs. And then seeing if you can lower down with your lats still on, down into lower position without this internal rotation happening, right? And the, the upper back turning off and then all of a sudden all the only thing that's supporting the ring dip is now the pec, right? Can we go ahead and give the shoulder some help calling a friend, right? Right here. Um, for those of you that don't have dips, right? Remember, work on holding that support hold, trying to get that for a quality. If you can hold that for a few seconds, five or more, practice holding the bottom of the dip, right? Remember, you can assist with your feet on the ground if you need to at the very beginning, but you're trying to go hold tension. This should be really difficult, right? 30 seconds of work, 30 seconds of rest. Um, guys, let's move on to the workout. The workout is a chance for you to take that skill session that we had last week of the power snatches and the overhead squat and actually apply what quality good reps felt like in a workout session, right? So now we're trying to go ahead and test your strength in a specific context, right? Maybe you were able to get to X amount of weight in a very controlled environment like an EMOM where all we were doing was weightlifting. Now we're gonna go ahead and this is contextual strength. Do you have the same amount of strength or do you have the ability to hit the movement with quality right positions like you did in the EMOM with the same weight? after running an 800 meter run, right? So that's what I want you guys to think. This is my challenge. This is why I had a lot of you, or all, I think almost all classes that day, essentially make sure that that last back half of that 20 minute EMOM, we were working on trying to hit perfect reps and making it feel over and over again, getting that rep accumulation of perfect, perfect reps or as close as we can get to it, to really go ahead and kind of build that neurological um, connection of good reps. And we'll talk about rep accumulation here in a sec. Um, this is something that a lot of you will be confused of, of, you know, you know, three um, parentheses, one power snatch, two over squats, parentheses, right? All that I'm saying, that's a complex, right? So you're gonna do an 800 meter run, then you're gonna come back in, you're gonna do one power snatch from the ground, you're gonna do two over squats, that's one rep. You're gonna do three of those before you go out on your second run, right? Um, I have a weight vest listed as RX. Guys, I should not be seeing anybody wearing a weight vest unless you can go ahead and execute the RX weight well, like flawlessly. Like you, you looked at that weight and you're like, I can do that. If you're like, ah, mm, that's gonna be challenging, you have no right to go ahead and throw a weight vest. Well, that, that just doesn't make sense. And we'll talk about why, again, in the later on this video about rep accumulation is a, a concept, right? Um, great, let's talk about mobility, stability, mobility, stability. Uh, mobility wise, try to loosen up your ankles, try to get your hamstrings. Uh, it's gonna be uh, really important if you have really bad uh, shoulder mobility, try to get that pec in the lat, right? Possibly the trap too, and it kind of depends on who you are. And then stability guys, wake up the midline, wake up the glutes. Uh, you know, there's so many different reasons why. Um, ask a coach, challenge the coach's knowledge of why you would wanna wake up your glutes and midline and loosen up your ankles and hamstrings, right? Um, and hopefully they have the right answer, right? And then maybe come back to me if it seemed like they were studying, um, stumbling and then gives me an opportunity to learn the coach up. So with that, let's go ahead and um, keep on chugging through and being relentless about actually keeping water intake up, 
right? Continually challenge yourself to add a little bit more until we're around three to four water bottles a day throughout the entire day, which isn't asking for a lot. And then of course, making sure that we're pouring positive energy, cheering people on in class, right? So that way, when we're not at the gym, maybe we're just gonna be more positive, it'll be more natural, and then that all that energy, energy can go into places other than the gym in your life, right? Rather than the gym being your way to get away from items, maybe you can start possibly affecting other places outside of the gym or your safe space. Um, cool. With that, let's talk about a complicated subject of um, rep accumulation, right? I, and now, I don't think this is actually very complicated at all, but um, people over simplify this, right? And I understand why, right? It's, it goes in line with like volume, more volume will fix everything. My rant that I did a little while ago, that it goes in hand in hand with the 10,000 hour rule. As long as you put 10,000 hours of work in, you will get better. So I think you guys who watch the van rant can know where this is going. But rep accumulation is essentially that same exact concept of the 10,000 hour rule, but usually it's specifically you hear it in athletics. So. With that, uh, you know, rep accumulation is all about creating a neurological connection between, um, well, I should say between your brain, right, and other movements to make your brain so used to the rep that it naturally starts to happen, right? And you don't even have to think about certain positions. It's kind of like breathing. A lot of times you don't even think about it, right? You're just going out the day, you don't, um, you know, it's like walking. You don't have to think how to actually have your cadence in step by step by step. It's because you have so many repetitions, your brain just naturally knows how to do it. Same exact concept with rep accumulation. You're trying to do that with whatever athletic movement that you're trying to do in your sport, right? Here's the issue with rep accumulation and people dumb it down. Um, and it can be really uh, kind of dangerous um, because it doesn't work out that great, right? Um, so rep accumulation, you have to be super careful about this concept because let's just say it right now, nobody is perfect. Everybody's anatomy and physiology, you all have some sort of asymmetry that you were either born with or developed through a, something that your mind was trying to find a quick fix to go ahead and solve a problem, right? Um, because of that, it will grow asymmetries. And then all of a sudden you put 10,000 reps in with your body trying to go ahead and make up for this asymmetry, you're going to go and create a problem, right? Now it might not materialize at X amount of weight, especially if we're talking CrossFit or weightlifting, but it will usually materialize way later, right? In a heavier weight. Or what will end up being is under, uh, it, it will be such a small asymmetry that the it will not actually show to be an overuse injury until you have so many reps in to where it's almost impossible to back out, right? Because it's gonna take so much time and effort that most people, the amount of effort that you need to back these items out, you don't have the wherewithal to actually put the time in to fix it. Right? Oh, that's just being honest, right? Because you have other things in life. You have relationships or you have your career that you're trying to focus on. You have kids, it, whatever you want to say. So we need to make sure if we're talking about volume accumulation, we are slowing down, we're playing the long game, we're starving out as many asymmetries as we can. And when it's time to put the rep accumulation in and start to kind of like press play on that concept, we are trying to accumulate perfect reps and we're trying to starve out asymmetries. Because I see it all the time, and guess what? We aren't trying to starve out these asymmetries or these uh, biomechanical hacks, right, that are not gonna pay any dividends later on in the, um, later on down the road. Uh, um, guys, I'm gonna stop it there. Uh, it was a mini rant, so let's go ahead, make sure anything that you do, right, you are relentless within your virtuosity of that movement. So that way we can have freedom from mediocrity, right? So remember, freedom from mediocrity is our vision. Why? Our mission statement is virtuosity, right? 
relentless virtuosity and how we do it right is just being relentless, having that mental side of always trying to do better, always trying to do better, never giving up on the concept. Guys, I'm gonna leave it at that. So as I said, just like I impact our vision and mission statement, guys, be relentless in everything that you do so we can go ahead and find freedom from mediocrity.